Good morning. Good morning, Life Church. How's everybody doing? Yeah? Good. Everybody have a good week? Good. Wonderful. Wonderful. And you love the rain? Farmers, yes! Bring the rain down! Too bad I cannot stand down here, far away from you. No, I'm good. One, two. You good? Awesome. So, this morning, I will be talking about knowing and hearing the Holy Spirit. Knowing and hearing the Holy Spirit. How many of you believe that God still speaks today? Amen. And how many of you know that God still speaks through His Spirit? How many of you believe that God still through still speak through His Word? Amen. And God, yes, He is still speaking today. But the thing is that we have to know, and this is something that I wrote down on my note, how can we know how to hear the Holy Spirit if we don't know Him? That's really, really important point. You cannot hear the voice of the Holy Spirit without knowing Him. My kids, if I say, my kids going to the lobby, and I, if they hear me talking in here, they will know that's Daddy. And that is the same thing with the Holy Spirit within us. Amen? We have to know the Holy Spirit for us to, dis, to distinct His voice. Because if you're looking at our lives today, there's so much noises. Too many noises surrounding us. And one thing that I kind of tell a lot of people, you have three voices always, always present with you. From the time that you're born until now, there's always three voices. Number one, can someone tell me? What? What? God, God present in that time, in your past, in your, fu- in your present, in your future, God always present. Second one, what's that? Holy Spirit is God, yes? Come on. The second one is your enemies. The devil always, always there. Guess who always reminds you of your past? Your enemies. So always know that your enemies will always be present, whether you like it or not. Amen? We live in a world that is fallen. And the third voice, can someone? Third voice, it's your own voice. Those three voices always present wherever we go. In your past, in present today, and in your future, all those three voices always present. And guess whose voice always the loudest? Enemy's voice always the loudest. And we never take a chance to sit down and hear what is the Holy Spirit is saying. We always immediately go back into what the enemy is saying. So, from today, then we're going to learn how to hear and knowing and hearing the voice of the Holy Spirit. Amen? Let's go to John 10. John chapter 10, verse 1 and 5. This is what it says. Most assuredly, I say to you, he who does not enter the sheepfold by the door, but climbs up some other way, the same is a thief and a robber. But he who enters by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the doorkeepers opens, and the sheep hear his voice, and he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. Isn't that so wonderful? In the time that you gave your life to Christ, God knows you by name. Isn't that a good news? As soon as you came into the door, he immediately called you by name. And when he brings out his own sheep, he goes before them, and the sheep follow him. For they know his voice. Yet they will by no means follow a stranger, 
but will flee from him, for they do not know the voice of strangers. That is so important for us as church today, that we have to know and understand when God speaks. Amen. Hey, son, sounds like the, uh, my, my mic is hot. Can you bring the, uh, its reverse? Thank you, son. Sorry, my son is doing the sound. So anyway, in all those things, we have to understand that God, we have to know when God speaks. Amen? It is really, really important. There are so many stories that I heard from pastors that are going to Israel. I would love to go to Israel someday. When shepherds go in there and they sit together as a shepherds, and they have all the flood of their sheep getting together. But when their shepherd call out for their sheep, they immediately know their voices, know the voice of their shepherd. And for us as believers, when we, we need to know when God calls us. We need to know when the Holy Spirit is give us a signal and say, come on over here. With so much of the noises that we hear today, sometimes we get lost. And we got confused. And let's go to verse 25 and 27. Jesus answered them, I told you, and you do not believe. This is Jesus who was talking to the disciples and the people in their time, trying to explain to them that the shepherd and the sheep. And they didn't believe it. The works that I do in my Father's name, they bear witness on me, of me. But you do not believe because you are not of my sheep. As I said to you, my sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. And I give them eternal life, and they shall never perish. Neither shall anyone snatch them out of my hand. My Father, who has given them to me, is greater than all, and no one is able to snatch them out of my Father's hand. I and my Father are one. And that's what we have to know. We have to know him to know his voice. And then the question goes into, who is the Holy Spirit? And let's go into, there's so many places in the Bible. The first one that you're going to go, remember, it's in Genesis 1, 1 and 2. When the Holy Spirit, when God was picking out into the creation, and the Holy Spirit was hovering over the water. And that's where it came from in the beginning. Where in the Bible that the Holy Spirit um, described in that place. So, the first one, who is the Holy Spirit? He is the third person of the triune God. And the second one, he is fully divine and not part human. He is a person and not a thing. And a lot of time we're always thinking of the Holy Spirit it's something that weird and somewhere out there. No, he is a person like you and me. And know that the Holy Spirit sits right here with us. You can sense his presence in this house. It's not just in this house. Wherever you go, you can sense the presence of the Holy Spirit. If you are aware that he is there with you. Amen. How do we differentiate a person from a thing? And that's something that's really helpful for us to understand, that the Holy Spirit is a person, and so how can we differentiate those two things? Because a person has a soul. A person has a soul. And in your soul we have three things. And this is part of who we are as human beings. In the human beings, this is who we are. You have a spirit inside of you, you have a soul inside of you, and you have a body that I'm looking at. You're looking at me. So a lot of time, we're trying to label people as the person that we see. But if we're looking into the way that God made us and the way that God created us, there's so much more details go into that. You have a mind, you have a will, you have an emotion. And so this is where a lot of time Christians also confuse with this two part here, where the soul and your spirit, those two things are different. They are not the same. Your soul 
is where your mind, your will, and your emotions rest. Your spirit, before you came to Christ, your spirit was dead. There was no connection. The only way that your spirit came alive when your spirit received Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Savior, and He is the one that makes the connection back to the spirit of the living God. Does that make sense? So, a lot of time in our lives, we struggle over and over and over again, and immediately we blame our spirit. No. It has nothing to do with your spirit. Everything has to do with your soul. Because in your mind, your will, your emotion, if you're not taking care of those things, that's why the enemy was able to have access to bring all those lies and try to hook you back into your past. That's where the soul is. Does that make sense? So the things that we have to deal with in our soul, in mind, will, and emotion, those are the places that we have to ask daily. That's the reason why Paul wrote to the Romans and said, you have to renew your mind. That's why it's so important. Because if we don't have the renewing mind, then we will not be able to understand the Spirit. Amen? Amen? We have to constantly going into the Word of God. What is the Word of God saying? In any time we go through our circumstances or anything in life, we have to go back to the Word of God. Always, always based our life in this Word. Because there's life in here. Amen? So, those are the three parts of human beings. And then let's go to the next graph. Here is telling about God the Father has a soul. You pray, what? Yes, he does have a soul. Let's look at Matthew 12, 18. And this is where he said, Behold my servant whom I have chosen, my beloved in whom my soul, God was talking about his soul in that place, is well pleased. I will put my spirit upon him, and he will declare justice to the Gentiles. Also, God the Son, Jesus Christ, has a soul. Matthew 28, 38. Then he said to them, My soul is exceedingly sorrowful even to death. Stay here and watch with me. And do you know that the Holy Spirit has soul also? It's in Hebrews 10, 23. It says, Now the just shall live by faith, but if anyone draws back, my soul has no pleasure in him. So we're going to dive in deep a little bit this morning about the Holy Spirit. You all okay with that? Let's take a look at the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit... The first thing we have to know that he has a mind. If you take notes, I want you to write that down. The Holy Spirit has a mind. In Romans 8, 5 to 8. And this is what it says. For the mind of the flesh is death, but the mind of the spirit is life and peace. That's a big word. For the mind of the flesh is death, but the mind of the spirit is life and peace. Think about that. The mind of the spirit is life and peace. We long for life, and we long for peace. But those two things rest in the Holy Spirit. Amen? Because the mind of the flesh is enmity against God, which is, I'm kind of looking at that word, enmity means. It's basically 
coming from the Latin, uh, the Latin word, the root is the enemy. You're basically the enemy of God. When you have the fleshly mind, it's basically that's what it meant. You're becoming the enemy of God. Flesh is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can it be. And they that are in this flesh cannot please God. You, however, are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If, in fact, the spirit of God dwells in you, you have to remember when you came to know Christ, the spirit of the living God dwells in you. That is why it's so important for you to know who you are and what you carry in this world. You carry the presence of God with you wherever you go. Isn't that amazing? So many times we're looking at to the people that have high hierarchy and we sometimes, man, I wish I can be in the White House. Why? Because of the influence that you have. And the influence in that place brings out into the world. Amen? And that is the same thing that we desire because we want to be the influence into the world. But the only way for us to know is that we have the Holy Spirit that lives inside of us. And we have to know that He lives inside of us. His thoughts are God's thoughts. In Philippians 2.5, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. And that goes back in, into what I say. We must renew our minds with the word of God in order to have the mind of Christ. This is one of the ways the Holy Spirit speaks to us through the word of God. He gives us his mind as our mind is renewed by his word. To tell you the truth, if you are struggling over and over and over of your past, the easiest way for you to look at what are you thinking? What is that? Not meaning bad. What are you thinking? Its meaning is that what have you been thinking over and over and over and over in your mind? And we have to remember, okay, the first battlefield that the enemy will have with us it's in our mind. It's in your thoughts. If he can get into your thoughts, he will get into your heart. If he's getting into your heart, he's getting into your spirit. Then you will be able, that you will not be able to hear what the Holy Spirit is saying. So the only thing that we have to be aware of, to be guarded off, make sure we guard our mind. Because your mind is the doorway to your soul. And what are the things that, what are the things that, what, trying to think here. What are the things that is the doorway to your mind? Do I say that right? What you see. Those are the things that, they are the doorway to your soul, to your mind. What you see, what you hear, what you listen to. And that's the reason why it is so important, all the things that goes in here, make sure they filter through this. They have to go through this. There are times, for example, for, there are times when I, God has to deal with some of my issues, when there are triggers comes up. Or so, if there are thoughts that are going through my head. So one thing that I have to do is that I have to identify where that thought's coming from. When I identify where that thought's coming from, then I take the word of God and I say, if these thoughts align with the word of God or not. Because if that thought doesn't align the word of God, then I have no use to think about it. Because it doesn't align with the truth. Amen? And so that is one way that we can identify the thoughts that are going through our heads to make sure that those thoughts are pleasing to God. And we have to know that He knows everything about everything and He lives inside of us. I'll say that again. He knows everything about everything and He lives inside of us. There's nothing we can hide in His presence. Nothing. 
If there are things that you might be going somewhere and nobody knows it, nobody sees it, sorry. Sorry to burst your bubble. Okay? God sees everything. You will be given accountable. I will be given accountable. Because I'm, when I'm standing in his presence, it's just me and him. Right? I'm not going to have my brother here, Tim, to come and Hey, he did the right thing when he was in life. Right? No. I will be given an accountable. But I have to know that wherever I go, his presence is in there too. Amen? His thoughts are God's thoughts. If you know him as a person, then you will have a personal relationship with him. You cannot have a personal relationship with a thing. You have to have a personal relationship with a person. And that's the reason why the Holy Spirit is a person and not a thing. He is not the power that we use, but he is the person that we know. I'm going to read that statement again. He is not the power that we use, but he is the person that we know. His power is at work within us as we walk in fellowship with him. Amen? And that is so important for us. We have to know that I cannot do anything. I cannot stand up here and do what I do without the Holy Spirit. I can't. Because I need Him. And the same thing when I go and face my world and face life out of this place here, I have to have the Holy Spirit with me. Because my wife and my kids, they will know when the Holy Spirit is not in there. Amen? In every day of my life, I need the Holy Spirit. I need His guidance. I need His wisdom. I need all those things that within Him to help me. And let's go to point number two. If you're taking notes, point number two, the Holy Spirit has a will. In 2 Corinthians 3.17, 2 Corinthians 3.17, Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord, there is freedom. For us, when we want freedom, we choose to, right? But the Holy Spirit really defined in that place, there's freedom in Him. And that goes within ourselves also. If we want the freedom, we have to allow the Holy Spirit to live within us. Amen? Because there's freedom inside of Him. And we can have the freedom unless if we choose to have the freedom. And big questions that all believers ask, and this is one of the big questions that a lot of Christians ask, how can I know the will of God? How many of you ask this question before? I did. I remember when I first knew into my Christian walk with God, and I saw all these people reading the Bible and share the scriptures, and I was like, man, I wish I could be that in that place. But God has to really take me in a journey for me to understand His will. There are two aspects of the will of God. And this is the first one. The first aspect is the general will of God. I'll give you an example. The general will of God we know through His Word, through impressions in our spirit, and through His ideas that He gives to us. And this example I will be talking about, we knew that God called our family to King Fisher. We knew that it was the general will of God for us to move to Oklahoma. We asked, and He said, yes, go. Pastor Terry came down and talked with us, and we pray about it. The elders pray about it. And so for us, in the general will of God, when we hear him saying, yes, you need to go. And that's why we made the transition, and we move up here. And the second aspect 
It's the specific will of God. The example that we have, when we came to Oklahoma, God led us specifically to Kingfisher and specifically to Life with Church in Kingfisher. But he didn't stop there. He called me specifically to be a pastor alongside Pastor Terry and the elders. And to minister to you and to speak today. That is very specific. Amen. I didn't know that one day I will be standing here on May 5th to bring the word. But in his specific will, God already did. He called my wife to be the worship pastor, to lead you in worship, to sing the songs we sang today. So there are times we get confused with these two here. The general will of God and the very specific will of God. How God isn't always general, but he is also very specific. As he speaks and as he leads, we hear this through his gentle whisper. And I'll take us into 1 King. If you have a Bible, 1 King 19, 11, and 13. And he said, Go out and stand on the mount before the Lord. And behold, the Lord passed by, and a great and strong wind tore the mountains and broke in pieces the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, the sound of a low whisper. And, then, and when Elijah heard it, he wrapped his face in his cloak and went out and stood at the entrance of the cave. And behold, there came a voice to him and said, What are you doing here, Elijah? And let's jump into verse 15. It says, And the Lord said to him, Go return on your way to the wilderness of Damascus. And when you arrive, you shall anoint Hazel to be the king over, his, over Syria. And this is where we're talking about Elijah when he was just finished from Jezebel. And God has to give very specific direction for Elijah and what he needs to do. God was teaching Elijah a very important lesson, how to discern where he is and what he is speaking. Whenever God is directing us and leading us into a very general assignment that he has for us, we have to know there's a very specific assignment that he has there for you. Amen? One thing that I probably told you guys this, when we moved here, and one thing that I told God, God, if I just reach one soul for you, that's enough for me. If your assignment for me to go to Kingfisher and just reach one soul for you, I'm more than happy. Amen? Amen? And here it really shows that God, in his general assignment that he has for me here in Kingfisher, for me and my wife and my family, if we reach one soul very specific, that means we are achieving what he has for us. And that is the same thing applied to you. Amen? That means in workplace, wherever God puts you in workplace, you have to remember that his general assignment is there for you. But there's something very specific. Why is that he put you there? And that's something you need to ask him. God, what is my assignment here? Amen? How can we make a divine decision as human being instead of a human decision? And that's going back into what I said. I need the Holy Spirit to make divine decision. I cannot make divine decision with, if I still live my life in a carnal mind, in a worldly life. I can't. If I need to make divine decision in certain lives, in certain things, I have to live my life with the Holy Spirit. God's desire is to talk to you, and one way that he will be able to talk to you is through the Holy Spirit. We need to know the Holy Spirit to know the will of God. I'll read that again. We need to know the Holy Spirit to know the will of God. If you are praying, if you are asking God for something, You need to connect with the Holy Spirit to know His will for you in what you're praying for. 
Amen. And we can have a relationship with the Holy Spirit. And He loves to have a relationship with you. And one thing that I always recognize to go back into a place, if I miss something in any decision or any choices that I have to make, if I'm coming to a crossroad, I have to make sure that I have peace within my heart. Because if I don't have peace in my heart, then I will not be able to hear the voice of the Holy Spirit. And that's always my encouragement with the people that I met. Whenever you're coming into a crossroad and you don't hear anything, go back and sit in a quiet place. Quiet yourself. Quiet your soul. Because your mind is going to run. Your emotions are going to run. Then you're going to try to make choices that is not of God. In any time you're coming into a crossroad, put a stop, pull back, and quiet yourself. Let your mind and let your heart be in peace before you make choices. Amen? And that is really, really important. Each of us can hear the Holy Spirit specifically. And you have to remember, I cannot hear the Holy Spirit for you. You have to hear the Holy Spirit for you. Pastor Terry and I and the elders, we cannot hear the Holy Spirit for you. You can. Amen? And the third one, the third point, the Holy Spirit has feelings. In Galatians 5, this is a well-known verse for us. In Galatians 5, talking about the, the fruit of the Holy Spirit. But the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There is no law against these things. Fruit of the Holy Spirit these are all attributes of a person. Can the chair be joyful? Can your car be joyful? No. But the Holy Spirit produces all this fruit. Amen? Only a person has love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. How many of you have heard the apple have joy? I feel the joy and I bite it. But we have to know, because the Holy Spirit is a person that walks with us, that lives inside of ours, and He knows everything. In Ephesians 4.30, And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God by whom you were sealed by the day of redemption. And that's the big, big point for us. Do not grieve the Holy Spirit. That really shows that Holy Spirit has feelings. How many of you, if you look around with your closest friends, And you try to hurt the feeling of your closest friends. Or you see your very closest person toward, close to you, their feelings get hurt. And the question for us, how many times as we walk with the Holy Spirit and we grieve His feelings? When He's trying to help us direct us in a certain way, and in our own will, we decide to make different choices. Let's think about that. You have a feeling. The person very close to you has a feeling. And your intention, my intention, we don't want to hurt somebody's feeling. But imagine the Holy Spirit, we do not see it. But we know that He's present. And how many times do we hurt his, their feeling? Do we hurt his feeling? Because, and this is one thing that I said in Ephesians 4.30, and do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Sin grieves the Holy Spirit. And we have to remember, 
whether it's small sin or big sin, when it's sin, it grieves the Holy Spirit. Amen? There's no big sin, there's no small sin. Sin is sin. Sin, it is what it is. And the way that I always remember, in the way that I look at sin, if you go into the airplane up in the air, and you look down here on this earth, you cannot identify where the mountains are. Everything is just flat. Everything is looked the same. That is the same way that God sees sin. Sin is sin. It is what it is. There's no big one. There's no small one. Sin grieves the Holy Spirit. And it does not matter whether it is big or small. And why is that? Why is sin grieves the Holy Spirit? Because the Holy Spirit loves people. And sin hurts people. That's the reason why. The reason why the Holy Spirit grieves that if we live in sin, as we continue to live our life in sin, the more and the more and the more you grieve the Holy Spirit. And you have to know that the Holy Spirit loves you very much. Because the Holy Spirit loves people, and we have to know that sin hurts people. It doesn't matter how much you're going to try to hide sin. One day it will go up on the top of the roof. Because how much He loves you he has to make sure that all those things are exposed up in the air. Amen? And that we have to remember, that we have to know that wherever we go, we have the Holy Spirit with us. And the questions that I have to ask for us, why do we grieve? I believe that all of us has, lost, has experienced a loss, right? So why do we grieve in those lost times? The reason why we grieve in those times because we don't lose a relationship. We lost fellowship and communion. And that is the same thing when the Holy Spirit grieves because there's a disconnection in our fellowship and communion with Him. We are not grieving the loss of relationship, but we grieve the loss of fellowship. We cannot hear the Holy Spirit when we walk away from Him. And we cannot hear the Holy Spirit if there is sin that is an obstacle between us. And I would like to end with this verse, this is Paul's letter to 2 Corinthians before he ends his letter to the church in Corinthians. And this is what he said in 2 Corinthians 13, 14. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. And that is my encouragement for us this morning. We have to know that the Holy Spirit lives in us, He dwells in us, and He is with us all the time. Amen? Can we just close our eyes? And the question that we always ask at the end of the service, what is the Holy Spirit speaking to us? What is the Holy Spirit speaking to us? will be the good time just for you and him. You can ask yourself, ask the Holy Spirit, what are you speaking to us? What is that you're saying to me?
Holy Spirit, I ask that you please speak your word over your children this morning. And Lord, if there are things in our lives, Lord, that we do not see, and Lord, if there are things in our lives that we do not know, We ask Holy Spirit that you reveal your truth and Lord speak to us. And Father, we surrender our hearts to you. And Father, we surrender our mind to the mind of Christ. We ask Holy Spirit that you help us renewing our mind with your word. And Father, we surrender our will to your will, Father. Father, not our will be done. But let your will be done in us. Lord, if there are choices that we have to make that's in front of us, God, Holy Spirit, we ask that you lead us, you guide us, you direct our steps. Father, let your will be done. And Father, we surrender our emotions to you. Our feelings. And Father, we ask, Lord, that you feel that place in any part of our hearts that need acceptance, in any part of our hearts that need love, in any part of our hearts that need forgiveness. Father, we ask, Lord, that you fill that place. Father, you fill it with your unconditional love. Father, we ask that you fill it with your grace. And Father, every our Everything, Father, that we have, Lord God, we bring it before you and we surrender at the altar. And we ask Jesus, you be the King and you be the Lord over it. As we in the attitude of worship and prayer, I would like to welcome, uh, to invite all of our altar uh, team to come up and uh, be available. And so I would love for you, if you have anything that we can agree with you in prayer. Anything going through, whether it's personal or know that the Holy Spirit is here with us. Know that His presence is here. Don't be afraid. We'd love to pray for you. As our altar team here, as we're ready to go back in a time of worship. And this will be the time just you and God. Father, we thank you, Lord, for this morning. We thank you for your word. And we thank you for your presence, Lord. And Lord, continue to speak to us. And guide us and lead us, Father, in your presence. We'd like to invite all of us to stand up as we continue in worship.